So in the last video, we got ourselves up where we created our MySQL database and we went through and set up our Kotlin project to allow us to get any entry that we have in our database. So for example, when we go to this URL, we are met with a list of entries into our table. So for example, this all corresponds to the information stored in our table. And same thing would go if I were to add another element. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing in Postman. We're going to get it set up so we can receive, copy one of the JSON objects that we receive, just so we don't have to type it out manually. And then we're going to set, it, set ourselves up so we can post that JSON object to our database. So we want to be able to create a new entry through an HTTP request. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and start up a new, let's see, is it workspace or? I guess it's just new workspace request. Uh, assistant tutorial. Okay. Okay, there we go. So we want to copy the URL that we used, which is player data. And we already have ourselves set up to a get. I'm going to go ahead and click body and click raw. Then under text, set it to JSON. So that way when we go to post data, we can just easily do so right here. And I'm just going to hit send. Now that by default did the same thing as going to this URL. We were able to receive the array of objects right here. So I'm going to copy this one object, paste it in our body, clean it up a little bit. and just change some stuff around. So just change just something so we know it's different. And we know we have a max of six characters, so that's just where we're gonna leave it. So we wanna be able to send this information to our database for it to be stored. Well, to our web API, which is then going to take it and store it in our database. So currently, if I change this to post and hit send, we're going to receive this error. So inside of Kotlin here, I'm actually zoom in. Nope, I cannot control. I don't know what it is to actually zoom in. But we're going to create another mapping. But we're going to do a post mapping. So we're going to do at post mapping of the same value player data. So let's create a new function. So func. Let's do save, let's do save player data. And for now, let's actually go ahead and we'll make it return player data as well. So we want it to take in a player data object, which will be through JSON. And we want it to also return that, well, actually, eh, I can't see any reason we'd actually want to say, we want to return it. So no, we're just going to save it and that's it. So we want to say, do this. We want to just have our function. And inside our brackets, we're going to do player data repository, or repo, dot save. And we need an entity to pass into that. So what we're going to do is var, or is it var? No, val player data of the type player data and we pass in player data to our save function ah, so it's bar is it okay i guess i just define it like that then so that allows us to take in information and save that information now this is going to fail but let's just see what happens so we launch it press send and it failed now we're able to go down through this list here we can go all the way back up to the top and see if it gives us any inset and it says field id doesn't have a default value so apparently it's actually receiving something and is attempting to save it but we might be having an issue so what we're going to do is because it's saying field id doesn't have a default value if we head over to our mysql database go to player data alter table and look at ID, it does not have a default 
value slash expression or anything. So we're going to check auto increment. And that'll make it so when an entry gets created into here, it'll go from 1 to 2, then 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. So now when we try to post, well, nothing got returned. Let's try to refresh. And here's our table, like our, our entry. However, it didn't take in any of this information that we tried to pass to it. Now, because we're passing it in as a body, we need to tell Kotlin, or I guess this would be spring or shape, I don't know what, what it is, whatever the heck it is, to let it know that we're using our request body as our variable information. So, because this language is proving itself to be pretty nice, we're going to use at request body, like so. Press alt enter, and it'll go ahead and include it up, uh, where did it include it? I don't know, it took away some stuff and added some stuff. Oh, I guess it just imported all there. So it went ahead and uh, imported it all for us. So let's relaunch it again and give it another try. So we hit send, no errors, refresh our database, and here we have our new entry with the corresponding information. So we have our X chord, our Z chord, and our Y chord. So that's a little bit backwards. We want it to be X, Y, and Z. So we're going to reorient it like this. So even though all this information is correct, we want it to be stored like it is, well, let me say uh, sent, how it's supposed to be. So we have our new ID, which, can we pass it in without the ID? Yes, we can. I did not actually know that. So we just pass in our X, Y, and Z coordinate. So this would be like our player's location in the world. So we would construct pretty much a vector. I'll, actually, I want to look that up real quick and see if there's a vector type real quick. Okay, so there is apparently no vector type. So for now, we're going to stick with this format. Because I think that will honestly probably be the simplest and the other ways that people were recommending doing it was as a blob or you would find the type in here yeah blob and others were doing it as strings and just separating via commas and that kind of stuff so it is what it is that would be nice to have that kind of type but not all that worried about it so i'm just going to select all these can i not select there we go Okay, delete these now, there we go. So when we start out, we pass in the first element, we should be at index one. So I send, it just goes as ID five. Okay, so no matter what, even if it's cleared out, it's still gonna increment it. So that's not too big of a deal. We're gonna end up using a separate, uh, yeah, what do you call it? Way to I, a separate, I'm thinking probably a string or something like that. Some other way to identify ourselves. Because I want to have this set up so that it would be easily replaceable. So this is where something you would use something like your Steam ID, for example, to use as identification. Or something along those lines. Just anything you can come up with or even a hardware ID or whatever you can really think of. So when you join the server and you make a full connection... You would send the server your ID, and it would handle it for you, or the server would be able to get your ID. Again, it can't really get any information that's only known to the client, so this is information that has to be known to the server as well. So that is a problem we will tackle later on. But pretty much, we would do that. We would have a custom procedure here. So we would do something like select from layer data where I guess PID for player ID equals the passed in value. So we would end up doing something along those lines. But for now, this will do. So what we want to do next is we have this set up for getting and receiving. We want to try to move on to Unreal Engine and build ourselves just a very simple game to test on. 
So we're going to use the third person example project and just go from there. So we want to save at least the location. No, I want to just go ahead and write this down real quick. Location, player ID, stats, so health. Uh, trying to think of anything else that I can think of off the top of my head. That'll be it for now. So we're going to have three that we're going to save. Now that that's all done with, I will see you in the next video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where we have a Team Deathmatch series dedicated to Patreon, <clears throat> patrons only, written in C++ with Unreal Engine, that we cover from the ground up everything you need to know. So we have our custom spawns to prevent spawn camping, all that kind of stuff. So you spawn farthest away from enemies. You have your weapon customizer so you can add attachments and all that kind of fun stuff. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord server as well and ask away. So I'll see you in the next video.